Welcome back to the John Ford Cade Show. Another one of our Black Friday sales events. It's a John Ford Cade special this week. 2016 Ford F-150 XLT, $11,500 off total savings. Again, a 2016 Ford F-150 XLT, $11,500 total savings. You won't find a better deal than right here at Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Forcade Show. John, uh, Saints Rams, they've had some difficulties throughout the years. For whatever reason, Jeff Fisher has had Sean Payton's number. What makes it intriguing now for the first time, Greg Williams goes up against Sean in a regular season game uh, that counts. And you can bet both those guys uh, want to win this game uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the Rams that led the series 40-32, to 32, but, man, they first game in New Orleans since 2010 mm. with the Rams. That, that's a long stretch when you haven't played the Saints right here in New Orleans. But it's funny how all the dynamics. Fisher has matched up well. His teams have matched up well against Sean. Now Greg Williams goes up against Peyton. Uh, well, you know, the Rams offensive. The Saints right. should win this game. Right. But, man, the, the Rams defense is legit. When you talk about Michael Brockers and Quinn and Aaron Donald, and then easily on the other side, he's a really good player. And Ogletree in the middle, that's a really good front seven. I'll say this, give me that front four, and the Saints, they, they way ahead of everybody in this division. Well, if you look at the Rams, games have been played. They've been in a bunch of these football games, not a high-scoring game, and the games they won were, were, were really low scored. But you got to remember now, they're coming in with a rookie quarterback. Or Case Keesum. And, uh, and I'm looking yeah. at the scenario here with their rookie qu uh, quarterback coming in here, starting his first game last week and his horrible numbers for Goffs, and he's going to come in the Superdome playing at a home game for the New Orleans Saints, and usually the crowd's into it, depending on how the Saints go about it. But you're right, they played well against the Rams, and the Saints have played well against each other, where the Rams have won some football games because why, Mike? Because it is the defense. Right. Their offense has scored enough points to beat the Saints, and but that defense of theirs is really one of the top defenses. You know, I'd say top five or six in the league. Uh, but I don't see the Saints losing this game. I don't see it either, but one of the things in years past and doing a little research is Steven Jackson would have great games against yeah. the Saints. Now you've got Todd Gurley almost in his role to make it. I think if the Rams have any shot to win this game, Todd Gurley's got to be the bell cow, and he's got to carry the football 25, 28 times in this game and roll up 150 yards rushing. Oh, there's no doubt. The only way they're going to beat the Saints is if Gurley does what, what they're capable of knowing he can do, and that's run the football. 25 to 30 carries. He's got to get well over 150 yards for them to have a chance. I still look at this quarterback scenario they have. Even if they don't play this guy, even if they have to pull him and put the backup in, he was a starter. Well, Case Keenum's Case not going to win. No, nah, he's not going to win you a lot of football games. And they like throwing the ball underneath, so that helps the Saints because they know they ain't going to throw the ball deep. But you got to be prepared to get these short throws by the, the Rams. I just don't see them losing this football. If they lose this football game, there's some uh, issues here. Some major issues. Yes. One of the things that I think they have an advantage, special teams. Yes, they you do. You go back, one of the things Jeff Fisher has always had is great special teams. They have a terrific punter. Now, Morstead's a really good punter, but, man, Hecker, he's, he's at another level as far as the punter's concerned. Big-time leg and their field goal kicker. But they, they adapt to do some trick plays. One of the things Fisher has been known to do is he puts this in every week, some trick plays on special teams. Last night, basically, Sean kind of tipped that off to us that I think that this may be a week he breaks one of those things out. So we're telling our special teams, be on alert. Mm -hmm. And the way this thing special teams has played, <laughs> I don't know about telling them would do any good because, uh, you know, they've just broken down so many times on special teams. And if you look at their punting kicking situation compared to the Saints punting kicking situation, I'll take the Rams. Well, they also got return guys in the Rams. He's, he's really good. He's really, really good. The Saints haven't had a return guy do anything for the Saints since, you know, uh, Sproles was Sproles, here. Yeah. And before that, had to be when Bush was here. Uh, that's the thing that brings the Rams into this ball game, having a shot, special teams. Knowing what the Saints have done already on field goals and getting four blocked already this season, uh, you might want to see something coming up from the Rams situation. And, and to let people know out there, the Saints have hired – another coach on the special team. So that would make three coaches coaching special teams. I've never seen that in any football league where you got three coaches coaching one position. And one of the things O'Day was brought in for now, he's been with eight teams since 1994, which means, you know, he ain't buying nothing. He's right. just renting. Right. Uh, everywhere he's going, he, he's jumping around. His specialty is the snap, the hold, the kick. Now, 
what are the other two guys are going to do if that's his specialty? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I understand you have to block for him, but his specialty is the snap, the hold, the kick. Uh, you know, so two other guys got to handle, I guess, one on each side to make sure everything's yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, you take one up back over here, you get the <laughs> other up back over there. As far as alignment, I think they get tr they get coached by the O line and coach a little bit there that. too. But you, if you look at the special teams, they got to get where the guy snaps the ball. He's got to be able to raise up. He's got to be able just to, enough that if somebody does jump over you, they'll hit you. And some of these guys sit down and admire their nice, pretty snap, and they get up too late. And that's what happened against the Denver. And then happen the same thing against the Carolina. So uh, I look at it this way: they got to improve their special team. But there's no way, Mike, you're going to tell me the Saints lose this game at uh, home. I wouldn't think so. That's one of the guys who's really made a great progress with the Rams. He was a major disappointment in Tampa Bay. Was Mark Barron? We watched him so many years with Alabama. Mm -hmm. Terrific safety. Uh, his coverage skills were so-so. All of a sudden, they put him in that kind of uh, manster position at that outside linebacker. And man, Mark Barron's really played some great football for the Rams. He's part of that group. One thing with Greg Williams, he'll find a way to make a really good athlete right. fit into what he wants to do. That's something about a good coach will do. You know, if the guy's a good ball player for it, he's out of position. Well, maybe it's not your fault that he's out of position. Maybe it's your fault that you don't put him in the right position. So if he can move down and play sort of like what Vakari's doing right now is playing that slash linebacker, which Roman Harper did a few years ago when they put under him, Greg uh, yeah, underneath Greg when they okay. put him in there at that you know five six seven yards from the line play that that monster type guy where you you drop in a flat you can cover somebody but we want you there in case of the running game as well so uh, Barron's played very well for him as well as but they, they got a solid defense in, in LA man one of the things is uh, can you imagine if you Greg Williams and that defense, you know, you holding everybody to 14, 16, 7, and you can't win a game. Can't win a game. Uh, it's unbelievable. One of the things the Saints have had great improvement in over the last three weeks, red zone defense. They've only given up 33.3% touchdowns, which is the best in the National Football League over that three-week span. Mm. Uh, you know, and that's something, you know, for this team, it was basically they were giving up 60% of the time. They were giving up touchdowns. To go from that to 33%, to me, that's a major improvement. A lot of it has to do with the health of uh, Danelle Eller be coming back, yes. Sheldon Rankins, hopefully Delvin will be back. But I think the good health of Ellerby, and you saw what type of impact he's had, Rankins coming back, and also Cameron Jordan's maybe having his best season ever with the Saints. Well, the guys have all picked it up a little bit. I mean, for so long, they, you're going to get tired of being – in the locker room around town here about how bad you are, how bad you are. And, and we're not saying that they're bad in general, each individual, it, but their defense as a whole has played and struggled. But now they've played much better over the last three or four weeks. Uh, and, and you're right, when he gets to the goal line, they're, they're only giving up field goals and keeping them out of the end zone. But flip side of it, we're not doing anything on the offensive side of the football to help this team, especially in the first half when your last two ball games you're scoring three points in each half. It's funny how you fix one area and then something yeah. else breaks, and that's been the breakdown for the Saints. Uh, last three games really had difficulties in the first half putting points on the board. We'll be back with more of the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford.